Hello and welcome to our channel, it's Pastori time. I'm Bert. Hey. Hey. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. <laughs> um, and it's time for my monthly roundup of things that I enjoyed in February. Um, in which I take a look back over my month and find the things that brought me lots of joy and um, maybe sort of share some things with you that you might enjoy as well. Does that sound alright? Yeah, finding little joys. Is that joys. okay? Finding little joys. And it's also kind of good to yeah, take take stock every now and again and look back and think, these were great things that I've, I've done because we forget quite quickly. Um, so what should we start with? There's not much in the way of books. So I enjoyed what I've read, but nothing has been sort of stand out um, I want to recommend to you this particular book, other than a book which I'm sort of midway through at the moment. So I am currently reading uh, this essay collection, it's called Breaking Convention, Essays on Psychedelic Consciousness, um, and it's from a few years ago, and it's uh, a series of essays written by various people in the field of um, psychedelics. Um, and it's a convention that I think this um, is from the first one which happened in Canterbury but it there's been a few books since um, and yeah so the essays that I've read so far have been brilliant in this and really really interesting so some of them have been on sort of romantic literature and how it was influenced by you know the sort of intake of like nitrous oxide um, there's been stuff on shamanic practices and on can we go back to romantic literature yeah. and and what? Oh, so you're not the, not romantic as in like, oh. love love stories, okay, like from the like romantics. What words were right? Okay, those kind okay. of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? That sounds interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shamanism, sacred plants, and a Merindian epistemology, which is a great essay um, by Louis Eduardo Luna, looking at sort of pre-Columbian um, iconography um, uh, from the lens of. Um, shamanic practices and psychoactive drugs and it, I'll, I'll read you this bit from this essay because this is my favorite essay so far in here uh, so this is the first uh, the opening paragraph um, from this essay towards an exploration of the mind of a conquered continent shamanism sacred plants and amerindian epistemology uh, the conquest of the americas by the empires of europe nearly resulted in the total loss of the cultural technical and intellectual achievements of one third of the population of the world at that time the Amerindian crops adopted by the European conquerors spread across the world. So corn, potatoes, manioc. How do you spell that? Like maniac, but with an O, C. Okay. Uh, tomatoes, pepper, calabash, certain beans, as well as stimulants such as cacao, coca and tobacco. Yet the advanced technical capabilities of many um, Amerindian societies in the fields of astronomy, engineering, medicinal plants, ceramics, weaving, basketry, and, as is becoming increasingly evident, the sophisticated, efficient use of the land did not have any significant global impact. So it's basically sort of saying how European cultures sort of decimated and, um, the, the land and took what they could sell um, and market, but basically destroyed all of the cultural, spiritual uh, and technical knowledge of those peoples. Um, uh, so yeah, so it goes on to then say like that's how we we've, we've then taken this sort of Western mindset to view the findings of of those cultures, and what we need to do is uh, take the mindset of the actual cultures and sort of say, to, to understand what these depictions were. Anyway, fascinating stuff. So I'm really enjoying this, and uh, I might sort of buy a couple more in this series. Manioc is also cassava, which is kind of like. Um looks a bit like sweet potatoes, that kind of... Oh, nice, no, like a yam type thing, maybe. I think it's in that area, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it kind of um, looks like sort of... Oh, yeah, you know those, like, long... Sort of more tuber-y. Yeah. Yeah. Grows in tropical climates. Mm. It's cultivated for its edible roots, but you eat it, like, in stews and stuff. Let me know if you've tried uh, manioc. I watched someone... This is obviously... But I watched someone in, uh, like, diet stuff in New Zealand, and... They've got a good name for sweet potato. Let's see if I can. Oh, Kumara. Hmm. Yeah. Have you heard of that? I don't know if I'm saying it right. But it's, it's a sweet potato, but it's like, I guess, the original hmm. name there. Anyway, I mean, sweet potatoes <laughs> would be in my list of things I enjoy every month. You Although love sweet potatoes. We haven't really had any this month, have we? I think 
have. Have we? Yeah, we've got some. I made a really nice dinner last night, um, which is is not on my list, but it (laughs) it did bring me joy. So uh, we did, um, there's a new range of vegan frozen stuff that we would get from Asta, Mm. um, and they've all been really good so far. It's an Italian company, it's Asta, yeah. So we've had a lasagna, which was okay, It it was nice. But lasagna is, you know, always good. There's like an aubergine one, which Sean had, which is really nice. And last night we had ravioli <laughs> with a mushroom filling. Um, and then I, we did, I had that on a, as a side. We had some broccoli, some um, boiled sweet corn on a cob, um, a, a lentil mix with some carrots and onions and ginger. Uh, what else was there on that? That was it. That was it, was I, I believe. It was really nice. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, I mean, didn't make the list. we could skip ahead to the food section of my list, <laughs> which um, I just want to mention coconut aminos, because I don't know if we've mentioned <laughs> them. Let me know if you um, have a favourite brand of coconut aminos. We recently, Sean has bought a, a bottle of coconut aminos. Can I tell you what the brand is? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll put it up here. Um which is just delicious. So some of them can be a little bit too vinegary, mm. um, kind of almost like a sherry sort of flavour. We've got Rainers. Rainers, that's the one. And um, yeah, it's really nice if you sort of drizzle it over things. So peanut butter, drizzle it over a little bit of co- coconut aminos. It's really nice. And uh, Sean tried it last night. What do you think? I this morning. Oh, was it this yeah, morning? Yeah. yeah. What did you yeah, think? It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Uh, I put it over my baked beans. But you can just have a, you know, anywhere on a bit of bread. <laughs> in case people don't use coconut aminos, it's, it's almost like a soy sauce um, replacement that's meant to be less salty. So that's why Less salty. Yeah. So it's almost, yeah, it's soy sauce-esque, but it's also a little bit vinegary. Kind of in yeah, between those two things. Yeah, a little sweetness as yeah. well. So coconut aminos, this <laughs> brings me joy. And Sean's uh, enchiladas. Quesadillas. Quesad- quesadillas. <laughs> you know... Uh, uh, great, we just get, get like um, tortillas, wraps, and Sean's been making like a really nice black bean filling, and well, we toast in a sort of dry pan the, the wraps on one side, turn them around, put the filling in, fold them over, toast them up a little bit, a bit of cheese in the middle, it sticks together. A bit chilli. A bit of chilli, onions, whatever you want really. Um, <laughs> they're so good. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we filmed ourselves doing them at okay. any point, so um, give that a go, or uh, hopefully in one of the future vlogs we will film the process. Yeah. But they're so good. I just did them with baked beans the other day. Very much not traditional. Not traditional. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it is... Cultural appropriation. A little bit of blasphemy. Yeah. yeah, let's not call them quesadillas, <laughs> we just call them folded wraps cooked in a frying pan. Um, but those are delicious, really, really good. Um, it's a whole new whole new sort of meal that we can have now. Anything in a wrap, cooked. <laughs> um, so we've done books, done, done uh, all the food. food. Yeah. Um, some film highlights of the month. So I've watched um, I think about nearly 30 films so far this month. And it's, tomorrow is, it's the last day, isn't it? So 30 films this month. The highlights of which, it's been a quite a... I've watched lots of rubbish this, this month. So, um, But these have stood out to me. The Water in the Woods. Okay. 1980. We watched this as one of yeah, our Friday Night Horrors. Me, okay. I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> it's, I think it's the only sort of Disney horror or Disney slasher. Um, so yeah, from 1980, it's very much a kind of, I guess it's aimed at younger people, um, but it's got a real kind of mix of, because it's like on that cusp of like going into 80s horror feel, but also a sort of 70s folk horror feel mixed with kind of t- children's TV. Um, but I thought it was great. I thought Really good hair for out, really good clothes, um, some sort of ritual stuff, which I really enjoyed. And yeah, I highly recommend. Rituals okay. is another one, which is from 1977. This is a Canadian uh, film about a bunch of doctors that go on a uh, camping sort of holiday together, a camping trip. And it does not go well and it turns into a bit of a sort of survival in in the, the woods kind of feel, film mm. Sean struggles with these films because they kind of are kind of you know heart palpitations and um, anxiety um, but this was really really good I felt so it's obviously sort of quite low budget but I thought the acting was brilliant there was so much tension um, and yeah sort of sustained this kind of thing of you know like them all sort of slowly being killed off 
Brilliant. Really good. Really tense. Dark. Late 70s Canadian horror. Um, and the other one is a, kind of a bit of a lost giallo, which is um, Footprints in the Moon. Footprints on the Moon from 1975, which is just bizarre and brilliant. So it's about a woman that has that dreams about this old science fiction film she used to, she saw when she was little that sort of really disturbed her and the film within the film is a kind of a Klaus Kinski Kinski uh, science fiction film I think about it, the end of the world or nuclear war or something so she she keeps like remembering this film she obviously saw when she was young but she also somehow managed to lose three days so she wakes up and like three days have gone and she doesn't know what's happened and she sort of finds all these little clues about sort of places she's been, there's sort of blood on her dress, and she then spends the rest of the film sort of tracing these last three days of her life back. And it's really odd, brilliant, very stylish and atmospheric. And yeah, if you're a fan of sort of 70s Italian cinema, horror, thrillers, um, definitely recommend this one. It's, um, it's really, really good. Those are my three faves, I think, of the month. Um, speaking of film, visuals, um, we'll talk about some YouTube uh, stuff that I've enjoyed. Oh, okay. So, I mean, just heads, heads up, um, Avery Reads has posted a video. <laughs> Olivia, it's been a while and we really missed them. So we saw that yesterday. Yeah. That was lovely. Thank you. Uh, welcome back, um, <laughs> Olivia and um, Roland and Daisy. Um <laughs> I've also discovered Cozy Rosie Reads, oh, okay. which I'm really enjoying at the moment. I don't know if you follow um, her. She's mostly sort of vlogs, uh, sort of book content and, and life. Um, so, yeah, we'll link that below. Um, but check check out her channel. I think it's really lovely. She's really sweet. And she's got those naked cats. Oh, yeah, she's got those sort of Siamese kind of uh, cats. They, they look really... Cats. Yeah. yeah, and they're really kind of... Um, kind of kitschy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and uh, non-bookish content. Um, do you follow Behind the Moons? If you're into ASMR, I think she's wonderful. Um, really, really relaxing. So I think she's French. So she does some videos in French, some in English. Um, but she does what are my sort of my favourite videos, which are kind of like the the scalp massage ones and kind of the ear fluffy ones. She so she's great. She's got a really soft voice. What I have discovered, and I did some research on this. Uh, yesterday so I've got these new which would be an absolute another joy of the month it's been my new headphones which are the Bluetooth uh, if you saw in the vlog <laughs> I got some Bluetooth headphones uh, which I love and they're on sale so they're good quality ones um, anyway those are brilliant but when you listen to ASMR with them they keep cutting out because um, if there's silence for a moment or very quiet they sort of switch off. Oh, do they? Yeah, and I sort of found this out online. So um, some ASMR, which you know you kind of need headphones for, doesn't really work very well with my new headphones because yeah. it keeps sort of clicking in and out as they kind of do a little bit of silence or go very quiet. So that's a shame. But anyway, behind the moon, she's great. Um, I uh, yeah, for me, my right ear is my tingle cent central. <laughs> so a bit of whispering in my right ear. I could feel it right at the bottom of my spine. Oh my god, yeah. right in the Kundalini. Right, uh, right in the Kundalini. <laughs> <laughs> um, music, should we just talk about some music? Yeah, yeah. So, my musical highlights of the month. There's a new album by Rosalie Cunningham, who uh, I really like. She used to be in a band called Person, P-U-R-S-O-N. Uh, this is her second solo album, very sort of 70s, psychedelic, rock, uh, witchy kind of vibes. Um, so yeah, then that's called the Peace Puzzle. I went to have a look for it yesterday, but I didn't have it in the shop, so I'm gonna have to order it online. But I've been listening to it uh, as well, and it's great. Um, this has been my favourite purchase, which is actually a gift from Sean. Um, my favourite new find of the month, which is um, a band called Acid, a speed metal from Belgium from the early '80s, <laughs> and it's called Maniac. Look at that little maniac on the cover, some kind of dog skull thing um, so yeah very this is from 1983 I think or it could be earlier than that um, but it's just, just a really kind of punky fast uh, slightly witchy again uh, Belgian metal that's, that's all we need and um, from our recent foray to the Cardiff record exchange 
where I picked up a few records, uh, I just want to reiterate how what, how what a joy it was to find something by Tim Hollier. And this is his 1968 album, Message to a Harlequin, which is just wonderful. And it's exactly what I thought it would be. So kind of, if you imagine kind of late 60s Donovan, but with a, a sort of more of a troubadour kind of baroque kind of feel to it. Um, psychedelic folk, which is only kind of could have existed in those like, that little pocket, 67, 68, really. Um, just really charming, very sweet, very pleasant, soft. Um and you know poetic in that sort of faux kind of hippie poetic way which i love um so yeah finally oh not finally because i wanted to mention spring oh, the season, the season yesterday spring. was really oh. sunny and it felt really nice and uh, as i was leaving the yoga studio in the morning after my clean i had my headphones on i was walking home and the sun was out and i had that sort of feeling of you know like that sort of teenage feeling of having this whole like uh, life ahead of you, you know, like that that kind of nice um, feeling of joy and excitement about the moment, you know, and it was really nice and sort of had music on and uh, it just felt really nice and those first, you know, beginnings of the season are always really lovely, aren't they, where you sort of feel that change coming. Um, today's a little bit grim again, but I had that feeling, so that's all that matters really. And finally, I wanted to mention the, the J.W. Anderson collection for um, Spring Summer. And also the Fall collection, which is just uh, J.W. Anderson, I don't know if you know him, uh, sort of designer. He's bringing out some amazing stuff this year um, with uh, Harry Neff is modelling a lot of them. And also he's because of obviously the pandemic, um, his sort of way of uh, modelling, uh, let's say, the, his new range has been sort of, um, sort of placards on vans and stuff just driving around like Milan and stuff um, with his new uh, seasons clothes um, a lot of it sort of inspired seems to be inspired by like um, Carrie uh, but I really love the um, kind of the the artwork he's been using and that idea that he is sort of using this kind of new approach to uh, kind of advertising I guess in which it's going to be photographs of photographs I think is how we put it. Like so, yeah, it would be like this visual kind of movement around the city of his um, new collections, and people will take photographs and post them online. Mm. So it's kind of photographs of photographs, and it's this constantly moving thing around the cities. Um, but yeah, it's just some really lovely photographs and some lovely outfits. Um, that's been Feb's. Sounds like a good month. Been good. All the months are good, aren't they? Oh. Um, <laughs> So, let me know down below if there's anything that you've really enjoyed, um, food-wise, film-wise, music-wise, anything. Uh, new YouTubers that you've started following, um, and I'll catch up with you in, in respect to things I've enjoyed at the end of <laughs> next month. Okay, bye. <laughs>